Hello everyone. Today Hello everyone. Today we're going to be starting a green foot tutorial on an RPG. Basically, it's going to be a top-down shooter with sort of RPG qualities and what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to move the player around and basically move around the screen, move around the map, and also wherever we click, the bullets are going to follow the mouse. So it will be just like a regular shooter. So this is going to be part of a three part series and so in the first series, uh, in the first episode right now we're going to be covering how to basically move around, make it a smooth flow and make it look really nice. The second part is going to be all about the bullets and how to make it shoot properly, basically how to get bullets ready and going. The third one will be how to make your map scrollable and how to basically make a uh, procedurally generated map and enemies and things like that. So first off, let's go ahead and create a new scenario. I'm going to be calling this RPG Tutorial. So as usual, whenever we start off with Greenfoot, we need to create a new world. So. Let's go ahead and create a new subclass and I'm going to be calling this RPG just for the sake of simplicity. Let's go ahead and compile that. And you'll see that we have our screen right here. Now we're going to make a new actor for our main character, which I'm going to call player. So the player, let's go ahead and give him an image. And what I've done here is let's actually let's just go ahead and put in so let's just go ahead and put in an image for him I'll explain what all of these images are for later but for now I have so wrong image. So I'm just skipping around right now because it takes a while to find my image files and such. So basically right now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll explain what all of these images are later just go ahead and start off with this image you see just a pixelated night guy and we're gonna put him in now this player is ready to go let's compile him right now if you remember just shift and move around to place your character anywhere on the screen I'll put him right here Right now we don't have any code yet so this isn't going to do anything it will just sit there so let's go ahead I'm gonna save this save the world so now I don't have to put it back in every time we reset and it's created the prepare function to get that ready every time it, the world is created so now let's go ahead and start off with the most simplest thing making this guy move whenever you move around with the arrow keys so to do this I'm just gonna create a simple function called move well you can't just call it move because that's already a built-in function for the actor class so move player that's what we'll call it so remember to create a new function in Java just do public because you want it to be accessible by all other classes then void because it's not going to return anything then we'll just call it move player now let's go ahead and open up the brackets on this oops typed in the one for an array Okay. now let's go ahead and put in our code so first off what do we want to do whenever we move our arrow keys we want to move the player in the same direction so you see here greenfoot already has the function move now you might be thinking that we're going to use that that's actually a really bad thing to do you see greenfoot Move what in Greenfoot what move does is it moves the player in whatever direction or whatever angle he's facing in. 
and so what we want to do is when you press down we just want him to move down when you press up we want him to move up and right and left we don't want him see if you want to make him move in different directions with the move you actually would have to rotate him and if you rotated him that would be so weird just imagine that you his head would be on the side and he would be upside down when you move down we don't want to do that we don't want to rotate him so instead of rotating him and then just using the move function we're going to do it a better way we're going to just set his position so every frame if we are holding right then we'll set his position to whatever he position he is at right now plus about maybe five pixels over so eventually he'd be moving like this and when you press up He'd mo be moving, he would be setting his location to the same location but subtracting a few pixels every time. And we do that for all of the keys. So first off, let's go ahead and check if the up arrow key is being pressed. So we use an if statement there. And for checking the arrow keys, we do green foot dot. And if you remember, if you hold control space and then space, you get a list of all of the functions for that. And so green foot dot right here is key down. And we want to check for up, so we type in up in quotations. So if the up key is pressed, then go ahead and do this stuff. And so we're just going to be setting his location, which is just, just show you, it's right here, set location, integer, integer, to his current x, which is get x, because remember, the canvas uh, for green foot starts at zero zero here and it goes down to let's say 600 an approximate on the y and it goes from zero on the x to uh, i don't know 1000 on the x so to make it go up since it's zero to a random number we're going to be moving towards zero which means you subtract with the current x the current y position while the x position stays the same because you're moving up so it'd be get y let's get the y and then minus let's say hmm, what's a good number here probably three sure and we're actually going to be doing this a lot we're going to be i'll move this here to make it look better we're going to be doing this for all the keys and Suppose we wanted to change the speed. That means we'd have to change every single number in all of these every time. Let's not do that. Instead, let's just make a variable called speed. So every time we create this class of player, we just want an integer speed to be 3. Now we can change this whenever we want, and he'll be faster or slower. Suppose you want to make power-ups. This would be handy because you could just go into this class, say player.speed is equal to 5 instead of 3 to make him faster or something like that. Now let's go back in here and go ahead and do this three more times. Shift tab to unindent this. And let's do the same thing except for down. Now for down, instead of making it subtracting we would add pixels because we're going to go down towards the bigger number at the end now let's go to right for right it's from here to here so we're adding pixels and we're not doing it to the y value remember we're doing it to the x value let's go there really quick just plus and same thing here, except this time we're subtracting because we're going to the left towards the zero coordinate. Now let's go ahead and compile this and do something wrong. Oh, yes, extra bracket on all of these. And come on, come on, compile. Yep, let's go. And we got it, so working fine. It can move up, down, right, left. And diagonal movement works too, if I press hold of two keys. And the reason being is, how this code works is, this isn't an if else statement, it's an if statement. So it'll go through all of these. So if it finds out that you're pressing the up and the right, 
it'll change the y value so it'll move it up and it'll change the x value it'll change it'll make it go right too so it's technically just making it going up and right at the same time so when you press both it's getting that diagonal movement now we've just finished the player he moves pretty smoothly but look at how boring this seems he's always facing us in the same direction towards us it doesn't really look very good doesn't it in most games moving right and they actually turn right they're actually looking right and left they look right uh, left and such so now this is where these other images are going to come in see here we have a bunch of images for this guy. We have one, the one that we're using right now, where he's up. We have one when he's facing left, one when he's going up, he's looking towards, away from us, and right. So we need to change this, his regular image, to the corresponding keyboard image. So if he's moving right, then we have to set his image to the right. So that way, his movement will look a lot smoother. And to do this, we're going to make Greenfoot accessible to images. Oops. Alright, so I'm back in here. I have all of these images right here. I took it originally from this person, uh, Riley Fiery. I'll give you a link to his site and his image. This was actually made, he made it in the Realm of the Mad God pixel art creation thing. So you want to check it out if you want to use those images too. And so basically to make this accessible by Greenfoot, you need to go into your program folder, go into images, pretty much copy that in. Just copy and replace all of those. And I don't need this. I don't need this. I just need the up, down, left, and right images. Now we're good to go. We have all the images accessible by, by Greenfoot. Now we need to access them in our code. Now the reason Greenfoot just works in a way that you can't have a bunch of images in your little set image thing. You can only set one image and that's a default image. So if you want to actually access them in code, you have to do something a bit more complicated and it's sort of weird but all you have to do is basically there's a little function and there's a class for images that are in your images folder and at the beginning along with in speed we have to make all of this stuff accessible you have to declare it into a green foot image class variable so let's just make this private because we don't need accessible by any other class just the player is going to use it and it's called a green foot image is it here well it looks like that's not working right but green foot image with another capital either so private green foot image and we're going to call it the first one let's call it up because it's going to be the one for up image and we just say new green foot image and we put in in quotes the file name which was up.png for me and you can set this to any picture that you want to use so we pretty much now just copy paste this a bunch of times fix the indentation Whoop. okay call this down left and right now we just have to pretty much put this in here because i named all the images with the directions dot png double click right so just go ahead and do that you can use the same images i've put the link to the images below in the description if you want to use this what happened there this should be left and once you've got that ready can move on now we have all these images now we need to change the image now this is really really easy there's a function you just call called set image then the name of the image which are this stuff right here so when we're moving up obviously we set it to up as you've called it up right here 
call it up over here too. Then same thing goes with this. Instead here, we're setting to down here, we're setting it to right, and here, as expected, set it back to left. Now let's compile this. Yep, no errors, we're good. Now, wow, this is a lot smoother, and it's beginning to look like a real game. Now, one thing that might be confusing is, see, I have up, down, left, right works good, but when I move up and left, it changes to either right, the right image, or the left image. It doesn't go to up or down images. It always, it's always either right or left. Now you might be wondering why that is and first off before we change anything we actually want to keep it like this because imagine facing upwards when you're moving diagonally towards the right you still want to be able to you still want to be looking right because that's how uh it should be to be realistic you don't want him to be moving like this while he's moving diagonally and the same thing for this it looks really realistic right now because he's moving in the direction that he's actually moving in and so we don't really want to change this because it's good but i'll go ahead and explain to you why that is some people might be thinking it should flicker because it's setting the image to up and right whenever you click the up and right arrow keys well the thing is it's not going to actually do both of these when we hold the up and right arrow keys it's not actually doing both of these things so in order for you to understand this let's go ahead and take a little overview of how this code works so what's going on here is it's not actually performing any of these functions until the whole code is over after the code is over it actually applies the end result to the frame over here, it's just telling the system what it should do when the frame is about to be rendered. It's just telling it what to do. It's not actually doing it. So here, when you're pressing both up and right, it's first going to tell it to set the image to up. Then later, the set image to the right is overriding the set image up. So basically, in the end, the only result that will be applied is the right image. But if we rephrased it and put this after here, then it would turn right, then up would be overwritten. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Of course, this is going to look worse, but this is only for demonstration purposes. See, now when I do up and right, he's still facing up because the up overrides it. Now you can see that looks bad, so we're going to keep it how it was before. So now, we have a nice little character guy who is moving around moves around and he looks in the direction he's moving in and it looks pretty nice so if you like this video go ahead and give it a like at the bottom comment tell me what you think about this video if you want anything more in greenfoot if you want me to teach something else go ahead and leave a comment and go ahead and subscribe if you want to look forward to more tutorials in unity game maker or web development or greenfoot and go ahead and leave a comment, do whatever you want. And next up soon, coming out is going to be the shooting video where it's just the same thing, continuation of this, but you'll be able to shoot and the bullets will follow the mouse. That'll be out soon. Look forward to it and see ya.